Welcome to the RSP Boiler Room. I'm Matt Walden with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. The RSP Boiler Room is a series devoted to looking at a prospect from the vantage point as if I were consulting with a war room for an organization during the NFL draft and they wanted me to give them a condensed lowdown on a prospect either showing what they can do that should fit their system or what he may have issues with that he needs to develop so that they can either pull the trigger on him or disqualify him from their choice. And today's subject is Joel Stavi, the Wisconsin quarterback. David Agono, the RSP contributor, has done a series of analysis on quarterbacks and his piece, the NFL red shirt, is a very fine look at Stavi and some of the things that he can do. And I, the more I've looked at Stavi, the more I agree with Igono that he is a developmental prospect worth noting and should be a good fit for a lot of teams that run pro style sets in the league. So we're going to look at seven plays that encompass why Stavi is a good prospect in this regard. The first one is a nice display of pinpoint accuracy in the short game. And the short game is just a very fundamentally important part of quarterback play because it's an extension of the run game. And we're going to see this running back work out, work up the field and break outside in reasonably tight coverage against the linebacker and watch how Stavi drops this ball over the outside shoulder. It's pinpoint accuracy at its finest in the short game. Three-step drop, nice quick delivery over the shoulder, drops it over the left shoulder. Really nice job there. We're going to look at it one more time. We can do it a little bit in slow motion to give it an easier viewing angle here. Just drops it in the bucket there really from nearly the opposite hash. It's a nice play, and it's the type of throw that you want to see and is un has underrated difficulty. So let's look, at a, let's look at another example of his play in the short range. And this is a play action slant to the receiver on the right side of the field. He's going to read the field. Stavis going to read the field and see that he has one safety near the left side and an opening in this flat watch him use the play action fake punch that ball out with two hands look to that receiver all the way and deliver that ball into the open space a little high towards the well, above the helmet but it's in stride for the receiver to pluck the ball protect himself from the safety and get down we're gonna watch it in um, full speed and you'll see what I'm saying in a moment here watch it from the, the rear angle here and you're gonna see see this one safety over at the left it's got three linebackers across that play fake sucks in the linebackers he knows what he has immediately great recognition fires in through this open window hits the receiver in stride and I like that he hits the receiver at the angle he does because it turns the receivers front shoulder inside a little bit giving him some natural protection from this safety coming in from the top. Allows him to get down, you know, get his pads down. If he needed to adjust and cut across a little bit more, he could have. It's an all-around good throw. Let's look at a little bit more of a play-action game for our man Stavi here. It's a little bit later in the half. And this is also a play action pass. Watch the nice ball extension there, the sail of the head and the shoulders, and then rolling to his left. Now what I like about this roll is you notice that he, at first he stopped just a moment like as he was gonna stop at the top of his drop, about one more step, but he notes this defensive end getting past his block and he realizes he's going to have to slide a little bit more to the right. So he's adjusting the structure of this play, but still trying to make it work. And then what I love is that he establishes where his pocket is, knows that he has edge pressure coming, 
and just as if he was in the middle of the field, he hitches a couple of steps to climb and finds a receiver at the opposite side of the field. So he's delivering this ball from the 36 across the field to the 10, a 26-yard throw from pitch to catch from the opposite hash with enough velocity to hit that receiver just under the defensive back to the 10, and then the receiver gets a couple of more yards after the catch. Really nice play, and you may look at this and say, well, what about this running back here, this wide open man? Why didn't he hit him? Let's look at it from another angle here. You're going to see this running back. Take the play fake, peel outside, work up the sideline. And my guess is that as Stavi throws this ball, note where the position of the corner is. The cornerback sees this throw and probably can peel back and cut it off or at least make it a little bit more of a dangerous play. Whereas Stavi can throw this ball to this receiver up the hash with inside position and hit it. It's an aggressive throw, but these are the types of aggressive throws that you want to see from NFL quarterbacks. They can't be afraid to hit men in a little bit of tighter windows and not always look for the wide open guy. So it's debatable whether he should have hit this um, running back or not, but this play works. I thought it worked out fairly well. Now let's look at an example of good judgment in the red zone because it's a very important part of quarterback play. You have to act fast, but there has to be a balance between acting fast and being able to um, understand when to cut your losses in a compressed area of the field like this. This is going to be another play action rollout. Stabs the ball to the running back, drops back. Actually, it's not a rollout, it's just a play fake. Looks to the left, doesn't see anything here that's going to be available in this compressed area with all the linebackers and the defensive back sifting over to this tight end. So as he brings the ball back down, he feels the pressure coming up to the left side slides out and then knows that there's nothing really here and his internal clocks telling him I'm about to get chased down there's nobody open let me just throw this ball away live for another day excellent play let's look at it one more time in total play fake doesn't see the open man on the left rolls out throws the ball away and living for the other day is was an excellent choice because now we're at third and goal and watch this play. He's going to hit this slant from the slot receiver working to the middle of the field in this little pocket where I'm circling with my cursor. This is aided by the tight end running off the defensive back in this area and opening up that space with a seam route. And Stavi knows what's coming here and he plays that up very well. Takes one step, waits for it to come open with this tight end running it off and then just fires it in there and look at the placement it's going to be low and away closer to the goal line at the ground between three zone defenders and he nails that for the touchdown excellent placement in a compressed area and understanding what he needs to do with that play very impressive so we've looked at a lot of short routes here and one intermediate route that was a throwback to the opposite side of the field that didn't require as much velocity as just understanding of his coverage so let's watch a play that shows a little bit more of an NFL arm intermediate throw, a very difficult throw if you ask me. It's a second and 17, um, latter part, part of the half, down by seven, and they're at the 22 of their own hash. And watch this drop back and firing the ball from the 14 of the left hash all the way to the numbers, hitting his receiver at the 41. 19 yard, really a you know a deeper throw than that. Let's look at what we got here. Let's see if I can do my math here. From the 14 to the 41, 27 yard throw from the opposite hash to the far numbers in stride and over a defensive back, dropping it between the defensive back in the shallow zone and the safety playing deep and in stride for the receiver at his back shoulder to turn up field and get more yards to the 44. This throw looks pretty good from here, but now watch it from the quarterback's perspective. This is even more impressive because it shows Stavi's understanding of the coverage and his confidence in his ball placement. Because look at this, he's looking at this right side all the way. 
he's got that's where most of his receivers are anyhow but look at him show the anticipation where this receiver is covered up on the stem and he knows where the break's going to be he knows that this is going to be a zone a shallow zone throws the ball before the receiver even breaks on it the ball's in the air well on its way as the receiver turns around here's the ball here's the receiver just turning around now here's the cornerback from the shallow coverage outside coming off of his coverage to try and get the ball and he can't do it that's a pretty good throw 27 yards with velocity placement touch timing that's an NFL throw Case Keenum the other night against the Rams I mean against the Buccaneers made a drop in the bucket deep out like this between zones that is a was a sweet throw and it's why he's still in the league even if he's not you know a, a guy that you would consider a long-term starter now I've got more to see from Joel Stavi but when you see throws like this and it looks easy that's something notable especially from a player who already has experience in a pro style scheme so keep an eye on this Wisconsin quarterback and where he gets drafted because you may be hearing his name again in the NFL three to four years from now and it might not just be as a reserve it might be as a starter and a pretty good one if things work out with his development plan thanks again for watching I'm Matt Waldman with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio you can find my work at www.mattwaldmanrsp.com or on YouTube at the RSP Boiler Room channel or RSP Film Room that's the name of the channel. Thanks again. Happy holidays, folks.